institutions, institutions that are uh, for and by the people and of the people for that matter. Uh, that's really what it gets down to. And then, you know, when you look at systems in China, when you look at systems in Russia, what you have is institutions that are geared to improve the material conditions of average people. Even in times of war like Russia is in right now, you know, it's more affordable to get a used car. It's more affordable to be able to have your own home. Uh, it's more affordable to be able to purchase food. Uh, I mean, and they can do that in a time of war. Uh, you know, we know for a fact, you know, our system would be capable of it if it was instituted that way, but it's not. It's instituted in a very specific way to keep us in poverty as designed by those on the very top. You know, your, your bank teller is not the problem. The banking institution and the owner of the bank is the problem. Yeah, you have two radically different, I, go, well, I guess they're not radically different, but you have two different visions for what uh, different or, and a, or better uh, financial system would look like, at least off the top of my head. The first is like what you mentioned in China. It's like, yeah, you have, you do have a very robust banking system and it is centralized under the the communist party of china but it's the you know the workers dictatorship which owns which which has a dictatorship over the allocation of capital you know they you know they are pretty are they they are pretty uh, non-negotiable in terms of developing infrastructure like you know uh, telecommunications energy uh, construction all that stuff is funded by this, this centralized uh, finance. Um, and then, what were you going to say? No, you can finish. Uh, which is the preferable, which is the preferable version for me. Uh, it's it would be like this updating with the Fed now system. Only it's you know American citizens who have control over the Federal Reserve. Um, just it's a lot simpler it's clean and we know it we know it works because we've seen it happen in russia and china uh and then you have the the idyllic version the utopia that is envisioned by crypto uh, cryptocurrency people i'm not sure how into the crypto scene <laughs> either of you are they get pretty pie in the sky and they're there is a lot of overlap like between like the conspiracies that they see of happening with you know, fed now with CBDCs uh, and, and how they view like, Oh, cryptocurrency decentralized cryptocurrency is the, is the, is the way to combat that. We all need to have individual ownership over our finances. We need to destroy all centralized banking infrastructure. Uh, and I, the reason I say that these two visions aren't that different is, ironically, I think it's these same crypto people who are facilitating the the the, the more rapid decay of the legacy banking system, to so that it's it can be further consolidated by the, by the largest, you know, by the Black Rocks and the J.P. Morgans. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, one thing I think people don't understand about our system: everyone talks about how the Fed prints money. But um, actually, all banks create money. Like, this is something people really don't get about debt. And I have this argument all the time that um, when, you, when people go, like, get a mortgage from a bank, they think, like, okay, the bank is lending me money from their reserves and I have to pay it back. But that's actually not what's happening. The bank, uh, because they, they can do this thing called leveraging, which is a rate set by the Fed, and it's been as high as 22 times. So they have some amount of money in their reserves, but they're allowed to leverage. They're about allowed to lend out 22 times as much money as they actually have in reserves, which means they're creating money out of thin air. So when you, and it's not just the Fed, all banks do this. So when you go get a loan from a bank or a mortgage, they are creating money out of thin air, lending it to you, and then you have to pay it back with interest. Yeah, that's the good debt I was talking about. That's that's what, that's what why 97% of yeah. our money is debt. So um I mean, if I did that, it would be counterfeiting and I'd go to jail. And if an accountant did that at a business, it would be cooking the books and they'd also go to jail. But when a bank does it, it's not only legal, but it's the basis of our whole economy. And that's 
That's why we have inflation. That's why we have crashes like in 2008. Like 2008 was not the kind of crash that you'll read in like Marx in like uh, Socialism, Utopian and Scientific, which was the kind of crash in 1929. 2008 was completely like derivatives of derivatives and speculation. And just it's because our economy is based on fraud. And one upside maybe of central bank digital currency is if you didn't have this like tactile um money that you could actually get out of an ATM and like hold and give to people. And it was all just digital. Maybe people would wisen up to this, that it's, it's a scam. It's a pyramid scheme. Like the people at the top don't care about money. They care about things and they use money to get things. And then the people at the bottom, I mean, just watch any Hollywood movie. Money is the universal motivator. Yeah. A briefcase full of money is the MacGuffin in how many movies. And like what it, it's pieces of paper, it's worthless, you know, it well, only has value because we think it does. And I think maybe if, if it was all just like abstract in the cloud, maybe people would wisen up to this and start to opt out of the system. I mean, because if people want to trade whatever they want to trade with, like Bitcoin is an example of that, but I mean, they can't really stop people from just using cash. like. The bodega is going to keep taking cash. So I really think this isn't going to happen. I think people aren't going to accept it. I mean, I, if you want to talk about the cultural influence of money, right? Uh, I mean, look at what I think it was pretty much most of last year. What was one of the most popular shows uh, that was getting pushed everywhere? It was Squid Games, right? Yes. You know, like we, we see a culture... That's uh, like all of our television shows or movies. They're all they're all based around money, right? Uh, I mean, gosh, look at even like you know, uh, <laughs> it's 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 a silly example, but like, what is one of the most popular genre of uh, daytime and nighttime television? Oh, it's game shows, you know, uh, Deal or No Deal, The Price Is Right, uh, all these shows are Wheel of Fortune, etc., Jeopardy, even. You know, all of them are based on this idea of, oh, you can get rich if you are, are lucky or you have the right skill set. You know, that that's what it's all based around. I mean, even, gosh, look at American Idol or, you know, any of the other, like, reality television that's, uh, uh, like, based in competition. Uh, it's all based on this idea that you can get so big based on your talents that you can afford a lifestyle that you cannot currently afford as an average person. They always highlight these people in the shows that like, Oh yeah, I got this job at Wendy's, you know, and I can't quit this job at Wendy's right now. But if I become, uh, you know, like the winner of American idol, I can quit my job at Wendy's and have more free time and be able to, uh, you know, have the ability to, you know, fix my parents home and, you know, Put, uh, get my brother out of debt and all that other stuff, right? It, it, our whole culture is based around the the influence of money and and trying to pull ourselves out of debt. Uh, we got Mecca uh, Mecca in the comments uh, saying, uh, giving the example of Breaking Bad, which I which I want to go into. There's something that raises a good uh, uh, point. But yeah, Mekadapi also saying, yeah, 100%, our monetary system is a scam, modern slavery, agreed. But Breaking Bad is a very interesting example because it, yeah, we all, we all know like this, you know, this, um, it's a tired trope of, you know, like the, the crime boss who comes from nothing gets rich, you know, and we, and we idolize them and, you know, and they're cool you know, and, it, and it sucks to like them because they're a bad person. Uh, but you know, it, it, but we think it, um, you know, it represents the idea of, you know, the the dark American dream, like a dark version of the American dream of getting of getting rich. But whose idea? Breaking Bad is a poor person's idea of what getting rich looks like, but because it, it's all cash based wealth. I don't know if you remember some of the some of the images coming out of Breaking Bad, but. Um, yeah, One, uh, uh, like that, bad. the huge pile of money that that they would lay on, and it was they, like the they were uh, going through this. I feel like I should be talking in Zizek voice again, psychoanalyzing culture, but um, uh, just there, the, it was this 
idea of like, oh yeah, our ultimate dream is to lay down on a pile of money. That's not what a rich, that's not what an actually like what a wealthy person's idea of, of, of ideal wealth is. Like they want the digitized money. They want it to be secure. Like the most secure form of money is just like, you can't even, like, you, it's not, uh, like it's not some cash that you steal in your mattress that decays and 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 gets moldy. It's you know it is digitized money. It's this you know it's this highly efficient, uh, impenetrable cyber fortress of of futuristic. Uh, like your your technology exists in like in the in the in the cloud. You know in the in the technological infrastructure of like that is diffused throughout you know the the economy um it's very yeah, it's, it's it's very odd that you know we're taught to think you know the, you know the the working class the poor uh down on our luck we're taught to think that you know the idea of of making it is having a huge pile of money when that's like absolutely it's it's also it's not just tv it's music especially rap music it's instagram you got people like paying to go sit on fake sets of private jets, like a, a simulacra of being wealthy. It's fucking Andrew Tate. Our, it's like our whole society is pointing towards get money. and But the people who are actually in power create money out of nothing. So they don't want money. It's, it's worthless. It's numbers in a computer to them. Um, so we want money at all costs. And the people at the top will trade their money for like actual things like land and influence and power. And um, I don't know, man, it's really ingrained in the culture. I don't know how you deal with, I don't know yeah. how you deal and with And you that. can't, and you can't, and it's not even the culture. It's because, I mean, you know, a cultural conversation you can think of like metaphorically, it's something you can't opt out of, you know, like all the biggest movies, like you can't opt out of like the, the zeitgeist, but no, you physically can't opt out of the, 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 of, that's what I say. That's why that's why rich people want it to be in the technology. Uh, you can't opt out of using the technology. I, I have a Twitter video pulled up here that I'll share. Um, but like, this is what this is the like this is the kind of surveillance, of even day to day payments. This is what's coming. Um, it's like they're having to like take a scan of your eyes to be able to use like. Um, yeah, but also like how how would how would that work in a CBDC economy because. I actually think the the object is is pretty important, like the the green dollar object. Like in the Hollywood movie, what's going to be in the briefcase if it's all just uh, on the cloud? I don't know. See, I feel like it's not going to work. Exactly. We can't even comprehend of doing away with like the physical commodity. Uh, but you know, it's but like the conversation of what that looks like is being had without us. Um, like this. Here's the video. Um, yeah, let's, let's see this. So the, the tweet says, Welcome to the future of payments. A Fed now and CBDCs are joining forces. Say hello to a world where your biometric data is the key to your social credit account linked to your wallet. Who knew conspiracy theories could be so spot on? Social credit. Well, I mean, that's the thing. What is money if not a social credit score? I have an right? answer for that, by the way. But uh, cool. yeah, just that, that, this is, instead of like Apple Pay where you tap your phone, you scan your eyes onto a uh, onto a physical like scanner i'm oh, not well, sure if, if they put it in my right hand or my forehead i'm going full schizo i'm yeah. i'm going into the woods like kaczynski yeah Mark i think the beast. i I'll, like this is the signs i'm seeing in the background are in english i think so i'm pretty sure this is in the united states um but i'm not entirely sure I've seen stuff like this in China. Yeah, that's that, 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 like that's the famous. States, yeah, these are white. You know, white my people. father, you know, I mean, he he's religious before political, right? And uh, I'm not going to be saying that he's correct on this because I think this is hard to you know comprehend in a material sense. But you know, like this resembles the mark of the beast. You know, when we're talking about putting a chip or putting, you know, using our fingerprints or whatever the case might be to be able to access, uh, you know, uh, our own money, our own, uh, the value of our own labor, 
you know, 